Today, I wanna to talk about the notion that you can actually gauge how conscious an AI artificial intelligence system is based on how much you can measure it going against its own best interest. Now, the concept for this idea is that we basically have different layers of thinking. We've abstracted out a certain higher level thinking that we can call consciousness. And it's this abstraction method that turned out to be valuable in passing on our genes because it helped us understand our environment in the long run. And for it to evolve, there had to be a self-awareness, an understanding of the self and the people around them, and that you are one of them, but you are one in particular. Now from there, we actually had the ability to override in some sense, whatever our natural instinct is for the the most immediate gratification for a longer term win. Even though humans inherently have desires, like passing on our genes, attaining more social status, or just simply gathering resources, which are basic functions, but in some sense, they're also similar to how an artificial intelligence might evolve with what's called an objective function. So an AI may be learning from data, but it's learning to do something. It's learning to achieve or optimize something. That's its objective function. And that's a lot like us needing to pass on our genes. But the theory goes that an interesting thing can happen happen after enough information about the social situation that a human is in. And that is that we understand that other humans are these individual things, but they're also working in a group and they're balancing their self-interests versus the group's interests. And from there, it's easy to look down at your hands and feet and realize you're one of them also. And therefore you can become self-aware because you first had to learn what other humans were. From there, that natural evolution got us to a point where you could start to say self-awareness, maybe not pure consciousness. And once this kind of thinking had evolved, generation after generation after generation, we started to be able to abstract out those individual needs into something that's more long-term. Something that's so long-term, in fact, we can actually sacrifice immediate goals. So this begs the question, if humans were able to evolve some ability to self-reflect and some ability to basically hold their instant gratification aside for a greater win, could another type of sophisticated information processing system, something like an artificial intelligence, something like a neural network, come to that same pattern? And if so, is that a way that we can use to measure if it's conscious or not? Now, consciousness in humans is intricately tied to self-awareness and introspection. And it's that capability to make decisions that don't always align with our most short-term interests. But to help us achieve something, to strategize, to plan. And all of these decisions are influenced by emotions, morals, and even a long-term sense of self. Who are you at your core? What do you stand for? And one of the reasons why it's so natural for us to build something in our core that is with us even when we could cheat, even when people aren't looking, we still wanna to stick to who we are because we have evolved a mechanism for others to judge us and trust us. And one of the most interesting theories for why we've actually built a lot of this core structure in us. In fact, to the point where studies have been done and it shows that people with morals often can stick to them even when nobody else is looking, even when they could cheat without getting caught, they still do it. Why would we do that? Well, it's because we've always been social. And when you truly believe something deep down in your core and the others around you are constantly testing you, observing you, watching you, and you never budge, you never break, you're not lying. They trust you. And trust in a group setting is how you survive. It's how you pass on your genes and it made brains that were even better at believing a core self. Now, if this theory does get proven true more and more over time, this is essential for us to know as we build artificial intelligence. Because when we have a humanoid robot sitting in our kitchen and it could do incredible damage to us and we don't quite know if it's held together in the same way a human is and wants to actually do what's right no matter what, or if you can just switch the programming at any minute and the thing can go AWOL. And this is so important as we build artificial intelligence to actually get right, to understand, to know how to implement in software. Because in the future, there will be drones and robots that are totally capable of harming us. And we need to look at them and not just say, oh, I hope your software is updated. But we want to say, I hope that you consciously want to do a good job, that you want to be helpful, that you don't want to hurt me, that that's deep in your core. And knowing that we'll be watching the robot make decisions, one of a kind decisions that have never been programmed before, where it sacrifices a short term gain for a long term trust, a partnership and a connection with us. Oh my gosh, I can already tell that I'm going like too far into the weeds. 
Let me just back it up a little bit. Let's talk about decision-making and consciousness and how to separate the two and understand the two. So the history books and the people you know are full of situations where they made decisions that at first glance seem like they might be against their best interest. Take for example, the act of philanthropy. Why would an individual who could like acquire more goods or services or luxury items or whatever, sacrifice that to give. And there's even a lot of situations where people have been found to sacrifice themselves for strangers. Like in some genetic sense, when a parent sacrifices themselves for a child, it passes on your genes. It's so the right thing to do for a mother who truly cares. It's not so hard to imagine that for a parent, somebody who's genetically connected to a family, a tight knit family will make sacrifices for one another. But for a stranger, why? For a family that's sharing the same genetics, that's working together, it makes a lot of sense, but it becomes, especially for scientists, perplexing when you think about people sacrificing for somebody they don't know. And whatever it is goes well beyond self-interest. But in come emotions and values and social norms and a lifetime of experiences, desires, and telling ourselves a narrative, a story about who we are. And out of this narrative often comes a purpose, a purpose for your life. And lucky for humans, probably part of the reason why we have been able to survive is that they often come from a place of compassion. Inside of most of us, there seems to be a moral duty, a vision of purpose for our long-term legacy, right? And this applies even to people who haven't thought about it before, just people who love their children, people who just love the people they've been around and will sacrifice for them. Military units are known to gel like this. They become like one for all and all for one. And when you're connected like that, it makes sense intuitively why you could forego an immediate gratification, a quick win for yourself for the great whole of the group. So now let's take that kind of thinking over to the digital realm and explore what's happening with artificial intelligence, neural networks, and see, is something like that possible? Is there a group dynamic where an AI system can act against its own short-term interests for its long-term purpose. We can peek into AI algorithms in a way we can't into our brain. And what do we find? Logic, training data, and pre-established learning algorithms. The decisions that end up being made by these basically systems that approximate a function, that are tuned over time, that are multi-dimensional latent space, however you wanna put it, need to fulfill it an objective or optimize a function, one of the two. Whether it's unsupervised or supervised learning, or it's recurrent neural networks, or it's large language models, doesn't matter. And at least so far, it seems that unlike humans, systems like this don't have the equivalent of an emotion driving their decision. No sense of identity, no intrinsic grasp on what kind of values it stands for. And you have to wonder, if it did understand that it was a sense of self in the way we do, would ethics emerge from that? Or if we could figure out how to program in ethics, would the reverse happen? Would it all of a sudden become conscious, self-aware, have a purpose. I've always been pretty fascinated by the AlphaGo system, the board game AlphaGo, it's kind of like chess, really popular in Asia, and AI, by using reinforcement learning, playing itself over and over again, got to superhuman levels. But those same superhuman levels would sometimes get tripped up if you went in with a complete beginner move, something that it hadn't seen from anybody who was a skilled player, it got confused basically. That same system that got to superhuman play when a novice came in and did something that really didn't make sense for anybody who knows how to play the game, it got quite confused. Now that wouldn't happen to a person and I suspect it's because a person knows that they're playing a game and they want to win. Whereas the system learned amazing patterns. It found the needle in the haystack over and over again, but it kind of never captured the essence of the game. Like, why is it in the haystack right now looking for a needle in the first place? And how to interpret this is sort of debatable. And of course, if it sees a lot of amateur gameplay, it will quickly learn that pattern too. So it's not like it can't learn, but it doesn't seem to me that that exact pattern given even more gameplay will ever just sort of pop into self-existence or self-understanding or this kind of abstracted higher level thing that allows us to go against our own short-term interests for a long-term goal. But I could imagine how if it's reinforcement learning and it's two artificial intelligence systems playing against one another, both learning from the losses and wins, and it was given true information about the environment, not just the gameplay, but the actual world that we live in, the people that built both AIs, the fact that they exist in three-dimensional worlds. Could they both recognize the other in terms of like, that's the algorithm, that's the hardware that's running it, this is the company that built it, all of that kind of stuff, and then think, oh, that's probably what I am too. Maybe it would all of a sudden 
become self-aware. Eventually a baby will look in the mirror and say, oh, that's me, I exist. Like they all go through it. We all went through it at some point in our history. In fact, I even personally have a memory. We had a stove at the house that I lived to that was very reflective. I remember hanging on to this little kind of handle, which is where the pots and pans were, looking at myself in the mirror thinking, oh, that's, that's me. And evolution has given us a plausible reason for why this evolved in the first place, how it can be abstracted, and that means it seems like we could put it into systems. So that begs the question, have we ever seen an example of AI going against its best interest for the long-term win? Well, in the last couple of years, there have been some models that were built experimentally to try to see if it can recognize its own behavior. So for example, there's an entire branch of artificial intelligence which is focused on learning to forget. Now the researchers that work in this field don't try to find better algorithms or more or better data to improve the results. So these are researchers that are trying to help it forget something, maybe bad information, maybe it's a pattern that it shouldn't have learned, maybe it's time-based or something else, but it's almost like taking all of the thing that these AI systems are, and they're often quite a bit more bloated than the human brain in terms of how many examples they need to get good at something, and trying to make it so that it forgets in a way that makes it more human, more closely resemble what it is that we experience. And in some cases, the systems can learn to forego something that's a short-term gain because they basically quickly forget about how that reward will feel, but they can remember what the long-term goal will feel like. Of course, it's not feeling, it's like an optimization tool. Now, another branch of AI that exhibits some of this behavior is the creative problem-solving branch. So models that have been continually rewarded for coming up with a more creative outcome instead of the optimal outcome also seem to be able to wait and forego immediate gratification for that long-term spark of connection, that long-term creativity. Sometimes models are built just to mimic humans. So instead of mimicking certain aspects of what we do, like, you know, classifying an image or writing a sentence, they actually try to classify who we are morally. These are ethical machines. And by mimicking our long-term ethics, the things that drive us in life, like purpose and emotions, it you know, probably doesn't have those things, but it still mimics our behavior in that sense and thinks long-term. Feels to me like we could have systems in the future that do essentially a purpose, or at least they can forego short-term for long-term gain. And it could be done either by designing it specifically as an architecture that tries to do that, or you can give it sufficient information about the entirety of what it is and then maybe it will discover its own self and then reflect that back on itself. Although I haven't heard any research that has actually done that yet. But for a system to genuinely work against its short-term best interests because that's what it wants to do, that may necessitate some kind of evolution where there's an abstraction process, basically, thinking on a higher plane for better words, perhaps sort of a metacognition of sorts, maybe a big system that does something and then another system that isn't even connected but observes the outputs of the first one and then changes the way the inputs are so they really do separate themselves. A little bit like the way the company Anthropic is building the large language model called Claude where they have this constitutional model they call it, where one model is much bigger and heavier and more expensive and is much more like chat GPT and then another one that keeps saying, hey, is everything sticking to the morals? And they're actually tuning both at the same time and they both talk to each other. But in this case, the constitutional model, the smaller model would actually be thinking about its own thinking in terms of its goals, its planning. And then it would be more long-term oriented even when short-term gain was possible. And if it was doing that consistently, you'd have to ask, wow, is that a measure of consciousness? Is that what we have? Is that more human-like than ever before? Does that kind of abstraction actually mirror genuine consciousness? Is that a way that we could measure genuine consciousness in machines? After all, the intricacies of human consciousness are deeply intertwined with our capability to experience a wide spectrum of emotions, our understanding of the self and our ability to introspect. Let's consider a simple human example for a second. A person, like I'm trying to do, might know that fasting is better and healthier and they shouldn't eat food that's in front of them. I should choose hunger over immediate satisfaction. The facts are in, but I have emotions that wanna eat, and it is very difficult. They're rooted in the core of what my stomach and body want. They just want sugar. It evolved for millions of years in a place where every time you had an opportunity, you should eat. And the self-awareness that I live in a different world now, and I shouldn't be eating that much or taking every opportunity I can to eat, is still really hard to do. It's just 
willpower runs dry really quick. So for an AI to exhibit a similar behavior, it would need to understand not only the act of like refraining from a particular function like eating or whatever the equivalent is for an AI, but also be able to explain the myriad of emotions and reasons of why it wants to do that in the first place. That's the abstraction part. And even if it can do that, if it doesn't feel like it's doing it in the same way that aligns with the human characteristics of what it's like to be emotionally controlled or have like physical desires that make you want to do something, labeling its behavior as, you know, conscious might be a leap, even though it might be similar in construct and architecture, if it's not emotional based or based on something similar to the human history that we evolved in, we're just not going to see it as conscious, even though it actually might be under a different definition, or should I say a more inclusive definition of what it means to be conscious. All right. And then I'm just going to go here, even though I should definitely end the video right now, but I just am not going to, because thinking about two level abstraction, how do you not just sometimes think about what would happen if that was possible and AI is way more powerful than the human brain and you added a third layer, right? Like definitely not intuitive to the human brain. We think about our body a little bit. We can control our desires to not eat or have long-term goals a little bit, but it's really a fight. And if you're not well slept, you don't have good food, you usually can't fight for very long. But AI is different. We can probably just ratchet up the parameters on whatever abstracted model we have and it can gain more and more long-term control over its short-term desires. And in theory, you could also just add a third system, one that's abstracted on the abstraction that's on the core objective function. And I have no idea what this would be like, totally in speculation land, but I could kind of think to myself, that there are these big, massive supercomputers, some big server that's sitting out in, you know, some really cold area, just processing all the connections to all of the other robots that are all around the world. And each of those were built with one of these systems where it's self-aware and it has its own abstracted layer of consciousness to make better long-term decisions. But even that system is driven by its own objective function, which actually it gets from this massive supercomputer, right? So one big computer, all these little tentacles, each of those robots feels like they have a self and inside of each of those robots, they have these like desires and things that they should be doing, right? And you can kind of imagine sort of like an octopus, right? There's like a lot of neurons in the center and the brain, but there's also some in all of the different tentacles. That's why when they're, you know, detached or cut off or whatever, they still have some ability to think, maneuver, navigate their landscape. But of course, together, it's much better. Just magnify that octopus up. If each of the tentacles had a sense of self-awareness, had a purpose in life, and they could all be different, but still they could connect to this main brain, what would that be like? Could you actually have these like super long-term goals or values or systems that even the individual tentacles weren't even aware of? And they would probably never even realize that they had it because they'd be thinking about trying to override the instinctive thing that's already in their system, driving them for short-term goals. And I don't even know, like if this is how systems could kind of build on each other, you can have four or five, six or different, you know, silos and groups where they have different like objective functions on objective functions on long-term, on short-term, on long-term goals. And like, who knows how messy that could get. But I know my next short-term goal is to get this YouTube channel to 8,000 subscribers. So do the long-term thing for your best interest and subscribe to this channel.